Bro, I'm fat right now, though. I'm like a piece of shit. My titties are back. <laughs> and how long did you guys uh, have to uh, get ready for this fight, man? I mean, before you, before you guys knew you had a fight coming out in like a month? I mean, I had a, I had a decent amount of time. I want to say I had eight weeks. Let, let me see what Coach texts me. Because he texts me, hey, we got you off him. That was a long back, though. Because at first I was supposed to fight this boxer guy. Because I knew when Louie had a fight. Like, three weeks out from Louie's fight is when I knew. Yeah, and do me a favor, gentlemen. Check out the headset right quick. We should be recording already. Oh, we got the headsets now. Oh, yeah. Check, check. Make sure your switch is on. Hello, hello. Yeah. Hello, yeah. And we should be ready to go. Hold on. Fresh in now, baby. And we are live. Hello, everybody. Spider here, the Fight Card Podcast, coming to you from San Antonio, Texas. As always, we are inside the HOJ training facility and uh, being joined by two members of the uh, HOJ training facility. Gentlemen, Levante, Killer Cam, my man. Gentlemen. What's up? What's up? What's up? Man, you guys are fresh off a victory. Uh, of course, you fought over the weekend. This was in Victoria, Texas for the Tap or Scrap uh, second promotion, man. Yes, sir. So, I mean, you know, we talked a little bit about it earlier, man, before we went live. But uh, as far as training for this fight, like, what would be like a normal training training uh, camp for you guys? Like a month, two months? So, I like two months. As, as much time as possible, especially if I'm going to 125. Because um, the cut and also just I like I, me I'm, I'm always training in the gym pretty much every day, so just like I like two months to kind of ramp up my training. Like I'll start kind of and then like a little like light and then towards the middle will be my my extremely hard sessions, cardio, um, circuit work, all that. Getting just getting in the right shape and then towards the end we'll taper back off again, get ready for the fight, more game planning, mental work. Stuff like that. And for yourself, man? Levante? Shit, my I've been in my fucking uh, <laughs> camp for about eight months, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, I mean, as far as, like, this fight, because how long, how long did you have before uh, they announced it, like, before they offered you this fight? Um, I think he let me know, like, early June, maybe. So I knew in June. And, um, but I, when, when did that fairy card come here? Yeah, that's about the time it was yeah. at. Yeah, I don't know. No, it wasn't dates. It was probably like May or something like that. Yeah, or July, yeah. something like that. But I was supposed to fight for that fairy card here. So I was already in camp, half dead. Then a uh, dude pulled out. Uh, I ate for like two weeks. Then he was like, okay, it's time to get back in camp. We got you a fight. So I've been in camp nonstop for a while now. So. You see, and something like that, man, because obviously you, you did have a fight come up. And I mean, it didn't happen. So I mean, for, for you, I mean, it sucks, obviously, but I mean, does it kind of like bring you down? And you're thinking, okay, now, I mean, or did you just keep training through it, man? I mean, did you know something else was gonna come up? Yeah, I, I've had so many offers. Like, uh, there was some uh, rumors going around. I was supposed to fight for class when I never like, uh, I never agreed to it. So I had that on the table already, and then Tap of Scrap was ready, and that Fury wanted me, and then uh, apparently them dudes at Mealy was trying to get at Coach Jacob for me too, but I already signed for the uh, Tap of Scrap. Oh, okay, the one in Austin. Yeah, so I had about four fights I could have probably lined up for. Yeah, man, you could have had your old schedule for the year, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man, but I mean, I mean, amateur circuit, man. I mean, of course, these, these these are. I mean, they count when it comes to experience because, of course, you know, once you go pro, you start over. But um, I mean, as an amateur, man, you guys don't want to lose. And I know uh, Cam. I mean, not to bring this up, but I mean, you're coming off two losses. Yeah. Uh, your performance, man. I mean, just like I was telling uh, your teammate Taco earlier, man. I see you guys training, and I know you guys train hard, man. So the fact that you go out there, I mean. Uh, what is it for you personally? Like when you get in there, do, do you get a mental block or are you just kind of like just get in the zone and go? So this fight, I didn't put any pressure on myself. Like the last two, because I, I know what I can do in the gym, right? Yeah. So I'm like, man, I got to perform. I got to really show what I can do. And I kind of put like pressure on myself to not only win, but to really show out. This fight, I'm like, I'm just going to go in there and fight. I don't even really care what the result is at the end of the day. Because I mean... What are, the, what are these guys going to do? Beat me? I've already lost, you know? Like, at the end of the day. And the first fight, I feel like... 
that was like um, a really close decision. I feel like I could have won either way. I thought Kim yeah. won that shit. I think I said that last podcast too. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, but you took that fight on the weeks notice. Was yeah, no, nah, not only that, I also went up in weight too. I yeah. was cutting for one twenty five, and then my opponent pulled out like middle of the cut week, and I was already one thirty. But uh, the Fury promoter was like, we'll, "We'll probably get something for him, so stay cutting." So I was essentially cutting for right. nothing. But I didn't mind it at the end of the day because, I mean, it was easy anyway. But then I got that offer for Texas Clash, and I'm like, I've already been in camp. I'm like, I'll fight anybody. I don't care. <laughs> you know? Because at the end of the day, we will. We're, we're about it here. We'll fight anyone. Yeah. No, no, for sure. You man. know? I mean. And then the dude I fought was, um, he's still undefeated right now. He's like 4 0. But when I fought him, he was like 2 0, 3 0, I think. So, um, and he was just about to fight for the, the Texas Clash Bantamweight title the amateur one so it was a, it was a good fight man it was a I think he really like pushed me and it was like it was just a really good experience I really enjoyed yeah. that fight and the second fight I fought um that one I put a lot of pressure I'm like I want to go 0 2 nobody wants to go 0 2 so I was like and I was like er I felt like I really should have smashed this kid because his record, I kind of let that get to my head. Maybe I underestimated him a little bit. And then I got in there, and I was I felt like I was doing pretty well as well. Like, I was putting a pace on him. I felt like he was fading a little bit. I had him in a tight guillotine, but um, he gator rolled out of it. Pretty good defense. And then I ended up slipping on the decal, like the logo, into yeah, his guillotine. And it was like, um, but also that one feels like a loss. Like not to take anything away from him, he won that fight. And same with my, uh, Marcelo, they both won that fight fair and square. But I feel like I've caught bad breaks in a sense where someone could make excuses. But me, I'm just like, I'm just gonna work even harder. And that's what I did this camp. I did, um, man, I was training like 20 hours a week, easy. Easy, 20 hours a week for like four or five weeks, just constant in the gym so I think honestly those two losses like propelled me to be able to put on this performance yeah. and get even better no yeah you see because I saw your fight I mean I saw clips of it but uh, earlier you know with uh, Taco you know he's got the recording on his phone yeah. but um yeah bro I mean you went in there and you just smashed this dude I mean I, I saw it and I was like yeah I mean, that's somebody that you know I mean not so much that they didn't care if they got the win but somebody that went to fight nah. and one of the things I always tell fighters bro and I mean I, I can't relate to what you guys do because you guys go through freaking hell and back just from training but when somebody says oh I'm gonna go fight that guy for me that's telling me like okay I'm gonna trade I'm gonna you know back and forth man mm -hmm. but when, some, when somebody says like you know what I'm gonna go beat this guy up like mentally you already won because you're just gonna go in there and, and do what you gotta do instead of like Having to fight somebody, you know, when you fight somebody, I mean, for me, that's kind of like a, like I said, it that's means a back like, and Yeah, it's kind of like, oh, I'm gonna fight. That means he's gonna fight back. It's like, nah, man, I'm gonna go beat this guy up and yeah. and go in there, and, and that's what you did. Mm -hmm. You went in there, and I mean, you smashed this dude. Um, Three rounds. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. I mean, of course, you know the, uh, the uh, a couple of things that we have brought up um, during the scramble. I mean, you threw a couple of submissions out there. Uh, you are a uh, blue belt. Yes. Jiu Jitsu. Mm -hmm. So I mean, the submissions. I mean, are they, are they naturally? Or do you set them up, or is it just a, you get them as they come? So I train with actually a lot of extremely um, great Jiu Jitsu practitioners here. We have a lot of really talented people here, of course. Um, Alex Carlson, you know, uh, of course my professor, Professor Jacob Landon, Coach David Lagoria, Brown Belt, Coach Dave, uh, or Coach Ty, my bad, the another Brown Belt. Um, a handful of purple belts, Oscar Martinez, another person I roll with all the time, very skilled, very talented guy. So I train with a bunch of people who are really good at submissions, and honestly, my this camp has been me getting just constantly smashed over and over again, so my defense is just really good. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm able just to be like, oh yeah, there's a submission here, you know, and I've always been, you know, pretty good at chaining my submissions together and just kind of like going from one thing to the next and that was a big focus backstage before the fight for my coach too that's what he wanted no and of course i mean i've been there uh when you, know, you guys are fighting and i one of the things i always say about your coach man, i mean of course jacob landon is he's real calm and I, I hear him talking to you guys and i'm thinking man that's pretty cool man because i mean when you guys are fighting can you hear him talking to you or oh yeah yeah okay yeah because i mean i know he talks and i'm thinking man this guy he's not just shouting like get up or do this or he's like hey put your hand here go you know what i mean like he's mm -hmm. actually breaking it down and 
And for me, that's experience. You know, that shows how, how much uh, experience he has as a coach, as a fighter himself, you know. But, I mean, the fact that you guys are listening and, and you know, I mean, paying attention, man, that's, uh, that's pretty, you know, that's pretty good communication, man. Yeah. So let me ask you, I mean, of course, uh, coming off a victory over the weekend, I mean, how much time do you guys need, need before you uh, step back in there, man? So, I mean, honestly, I, my professor told me that we're in no rush. Yeah. Just to take my time, enjoy the win, get back into training jiu-jitsu, and coach some kids' classes. I want to do, actually, a couple grappling tournaments. I was going to ask you about that, man. And uh, really sharpen the grappling up, and then just, um, I mean, obviously something comes up. Right. That's like, man, I, I fucking love this. <laughs> We're going to take it, you know. But um, we'll just wait and see. And, and yourself? Mm. Well, I already got an offer October 15th. I said, but um, we're going to see how my body feels. Right now, it's not about the work. I can get back and work tomorrow if I want to. It's just I got to make sure my body's up for the task. Where I, that's a five-round fight, too. Yeah. Five-round fight. I got to go back up and wait after I lost the weight. And uh, the dude I'm supposed to be fighting, is, he, I'm cool with him. Like, we talking shit at the events and stuff. He's a decent-sized guy. So, But I'm not worried about, like I said, I think I can beat a lot of people. Uh, I'm just worried about myself right no no for sure man because i mean one of the things i mean whether you're going up in weight or cutting down in weight man i mean you guys didn't sustain any injuries but it is it, it for, for yourself is it more like a mental like you're like oh man you know what i just let me rest up let me uh let my body heal a little bit yeah because we can i couldn't practice every day and during this uh, camp i came every day and i started doing jujitsu again i stopped doing gi for a while and just focused on no gi and just striking and stuff and uh i got back in the gi uh, started doing a little wrestling, a little nogi, yeah. more nogi and stuff. So I just started doing more, really to cut weight as well, but to also get ready because I knew that I was going to, at first I was fighting a boxer, so I'm like, okay, I'm going to kick his fucking legs out, take him down, <laughs> bash him. <laughs> and then they were like, okay, he pulled out COVID or some shit like a month and a half before yeah. the fight. And then um, they were like, you got a karate guy now. Okay, well, cha uh, plan changes just a little bit, but. It's still going to be a smashing session. It's just now I can stand up a little longer. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because with the box, I'm just going to chop them down, chop them down, chop them down, bow, take them down, smash them. Karate guy, I can kind of dance on you, throw some some punches, then take you down and smash you. So it's the same plan. But uh, so I just went a little harder in jiu-jitsu, went a little harder in wrestling, a little harder in grappling. Striking stays the same. No, oh, yeah. I mean, because I saw your fight you know, earlier as well. But, um... I mean, basically, was your game plan to go in there, test them out, uh, get the distance, and then take them down? Yeah, so I really wanted to strike with him for a while. So my, I was like, I'm going to fill him out. I'm going to see what kind of kicks he throw, what, what he throws at me. And then from there, I was going to attack. Because I, I think I can do a little bit of everything in the cage. Yeah. I just have to kind of see or read you and feel you a little bit. And let's see what I got. But um, he came out. Kind of fast, like, or fast. And I thought, I didn't think he was going to come at me. He was chasing me down. And in my head, I'm like, have you ever seen me fight? Like, like <laughs> But then again, though, they only got the last round of my first fight. Right. So nobody really, you know what I'm saying, sees me striking. Because I, str I was striking the whole first two rounds of my first fight against a boxer. And uh did pretty fucking good. So I guess they think I'm just a grappler. So that they think they can walk me down and or whatever. But I I'll probably knock out most of these dudes. <laughs> No, yeah, because of course, I mean, how's the jiu-jitsu, you know, the uh, affiliation as far as the uh, name? Uh, people think jiu-jitsu, right? I mean, that's the first thing they, uh, but I mean, of course, in here, I mean, you guys have uh, judo, you guys have uh, Russian sombo. I mean, there's a couple, uh, variety of uh, martial arts that you guys get to practice in here. But, I mean, when it comes down to it, I mean, of course, every, every time I ask people, like, oh, you know, are you, are you a jiu-jitsu guy or stand-up? And a lot of times people are like, oh, man. Mixed martial artists. I mean, is that the same thing with you guys, or would you guys consider yourself like a grappler first and striker first? I always say I'm just a fighter. Yeah, me, me too. I mean, I feel like, I, like I said, like Levante, we all can do everything. Everybody is like Monte. I go to him when I want like great striking work, and then I'll go to Louis when I'm like, man, I need to wrestle, and I'll go to like Alex when I'm like, I need jujitsu. Like, I th everybody specializes one thing, but we all can do everything. Right at the end of the day. I mean, and that's the goal. The game's constantly always evolving. You watch these UFC cats, and it's like, oh, yeah, holy shit, these guys are good. <laughs> I got to fight these guys in a couple of years. Better start training now, you know? 
No, yeah, man. And I mean, of course, I mean, the, the game has changed. I mean, back from when I was watching and there was no way, no way limit and no, no gloves, gloves, you know. But I mean, now, I mean, <laughs> the fact that it's just like, okay, you know, a weight divisions and you're fighting somebody at your weight, I mean, uh, you know, people are still cutting a lot of weight, though, man. I mean, you get a lot of, you know, 135ers that are cutting from 170. I mean, it's like crazy freaking weight cuts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was my first <laughs> first fight. Yeah. I didn't even know that motherfucker cut from 170. But he looked yoked. Yeah, like, he's, he's yeah like I mean, old. that's that's a hell of a cut. And props to him for making that. Oh, yeah, bro. I mean, yeah, it's, a, it's a science. So, of course, once they master that, I guess, you know, that's good. But I, I'm no master that shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just... Bro, you're like a white belt when it comes to cutting Yeah, weight. it's terrible. <laughs> I, I start eating eggs eggs and a whole bunch of water and it's like uh, miserable like, yeah. but uh you know what what's your meal to uh your go-to meal after after weigh-ins man <laughs> whatever's <Pasta>. close <laughs> yeah. so we so we always aim for like pasta yeah get, get those good cars back in you yeah and then um i this this uh meal we had olive garden chicken parm salads Bussin. yeah yes. But like, man, that re- I got bad heartburn though. Well, I was burping all backstage. <laughs> I'm getting wrapped up. <laughs> <laughs> just burping, dude. Bro, I-, I told you to take some tums though. Bro, I, I've never even had them shits before. I never had that before happen. Like I've never had to burp like that before. And then I didn't take a shit the whole like cutting week because yeah. I was eating nothing. So yeah. like I couldn't get anything out. And then as soon as we ate that pasta and shit. And- I ate a little candy, man. I was not in the hotel room, <laughs> knocking out the park, boy. It was crazy. <laughs> and then that was another weight cut, right? That was a whole yeah. different kind of weight cut, man. <laughs> yeah. I walked in the ring at like 168, 167. Oh, man. Yeah, like I, I, I don't even think I gained. We well, yeah, I gained 10. I gained about 12 pounds. Yeah, me too. I walked, but, I walked in like 138. Well, yeah. I think my dude walked in a little bigger, too. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, he, he did look. Sized up. Yeah, I was blonde, so I couldn't see him when he came in the ring because I, I I wear contacts. But when I'm in the ring, I take him out. So when he walked in, I, I couldn't see a difference. But uh, Coach Jacob was in the back, and he was telling me before that dude's not gonna get any bigger. He can't get any bigger. He's he's about that weight. And then after the fight, he was like, "I lied to you. He got pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think he was gonna get that big. He's pretty big." <laughs> you see, but uh, like Hamlin said, man. I mean, of course, you know, a uh, couple of years, man. I mean, you guys, you know, go pro, decide to go pro. Uh, start following the uh, the bigger promotions, of course, that are out there, man. But I mean, experience right now is what it is. You know, amateur circuit. I mean, of course, you, you want to keep fighting. I mean, the fact that you're fighting different types of fighters, from grapplers to strikers to to wrestlers. I mean, that's kind of the, those are the uh, the fights that you want before you go pro. That way, you'll know, like, okay, you know what? I fought a you know pretty good collegiate wrestler, man. I mean, so I, I know what what I can uh, look forward to. You know, as far as uh, reaction and everything else. But, yeah. I mean, let, let me ask you guys this before we go to anything else. Uh, when it came, because I know I've talked to Levante before, but uh, what was it for uh, for Kevin? I mean, what was it for you that, that you were like, man, you know what, I, I want to try jiu-jitsu. I mean, was it for self-defense? Were you trying to get in shape? Honestly, like, uh, it was just, I didn't, I started after COVID, right? So I was just at the at the pad, you know, I was, a, I was a little overweight. And then I was, like, watching a podcast, like a Joe Rogan podcast. I'm like, you know what, I'll try to do jiu-jitsu because I've been, I've been a fan of MMA. But I was like, I'll try jiu-jitsu, and then I uh, met Professor Jacob. I did jiu-jitsu for, like, six months straight, constantly. Like, three classes a day, just, like, just hours of training as a white belt. So I became, like, you know, I started, you know, doing tournaments and, like, you know, becoming, like, I'm, I'm still trash at jiu-jitsu, but less trash, let's say that, <laughs> you know. Becoming less trash at jiu-jitsu, and then um, just... Uh, then I started MMA and bro, as Monte, I couldn't even throw a punch. Like I sucked at fighting, so I just got my ass beat for like six months plus, just constantly. Until one day I'm like, oh, I can like kind of, kind of fight a little bit. And then uh, we moved here from Ohana because we all started at Ohana HQ. Right. Well, I started at HQ, we started at Alamo, but um, we followed our professor to this gym. And then from there, then I ended up, I got, you know, the first fight pulled out, got the second fight, which was my first fight. And then just took off from there. I mean, constantly. I mean, I also did, when I was doing jiu-jitsu at first, I also did Muay Thai striking. And then, you know, so I have a little bit of a base there. I wrestled a little bit in high school, like a year, but I broke my hand real bad and I stopped. So I was a baseball player and football player. And I was like, fuck wrestling. (laughs) (laughs) I wish I wrestled in high school. More. No, yeah, man. You see, and also one of the things, uh, I mean, because yourself, how old are you right now? 
I'm 19. You see, and I mean, people that are starting as far as like wrestling and jujitsu, you got kids already wrecking shop and going to tournaments yeah. and doing that great. So, I mean, imagine you starting at eight, you yeah. know, and re- whether it's jujitsu, BJJ, or, you know, uh, wrestling or whatever, but I mean, just the experience coming out of high school and being like, okay, yeah. I'm going to do this. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> I wish my school had fucking wrestling. Man. Nah, I know kids that started at eight, and uh, it's definitely a game changer, for sure. And, uh, but also, it's like, you know, I try to look at it like, you know, it's never too late to start, and a lot of professional fighters, like even our professor, he started at 24. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. know, and then he made it all the way to Bellator. And then opened up his own gym and has a successful business. So, really, anything's possible. He's got to keep grinding. And one of the things he did bring up was that uh, tomorrow it's actually going to be a year. Yeah, he, no, it's he crazy. told me, and I'm like, dude, it's been a year. I thought it was like five months or so, man. <laughs> it's going by pretty quick. But, uh, but yeah, man, I mean, so, you know, congratulations to him, of course, for, for uh, the success. Congrats, Coach Jacob. Congrats, Coach. Yes, sir. But uh, um, but let me ask you, uh, as far as training, I mean, right now, you guys haven't been back to the gym. Uh, so this week, maybe, or next week, start training? Just Probably this week. Probably this week, later on this week. And, of course, I mean, you got teammates fighting uh i mean fury's coming to san antonio my boy taco oh, shout out taco yeah, is gonna the, fucking smash is he the only guy. one from the team fighting yep. yes sir oh, man okay but uh i'm gonna be there for sure supporting yeah sure i was gonna love. pull up back to back so i was gonna fight this weekend and then fight for this weekend <laughs> but and then for sure talked about it and i was like yeah, i'll go back to back and then i was like well let me see Cause I don't know if I'm gonna get fucking hurt. I don't know who I'm fighting. I don't think. No, bro, you actually could have went back to back though. I could have went back to back. Well, my neck fucking hurts, but I'd have pushed through it to go back to back. You see, but if you would have done this one, would it have been at 170? You probably yeah. I Cause I was I wasn't gonna cut weight again. Hell no. And I thought about that too. I was like, I'm not cutting weight twice, motherfucker. Nah, bro. Two weeks. Bro, no. you would have weighed in like 68, bro. You wouldn't even have hit yeah. 70. <laughs> But, man, I mean, of course, Fury's going to be here, man. I mean, their uh, main card, of course, is always on the UFC Fight Pass. Um, do you guys watch uh, the fights, man, when, when they're on there? I mean, I know they have pay-per-view, but, I mean, when it comes to regional, like Fury FC. Oh, yeah, no, I watched the Fury fights last weekend. I don't. I, my black ass be asleep. <laughs> if, I, if it ain't my teammates fighting to me, I'm shit. I'll, I'll do if it's, like, my weight class. There's a, a There was a big fight in my weight class at the pro level. But, um... Or, like, if I see it on Facebook or whatever, I'm scrolling. Oh, I'll be yeah. like, yeah, I'll yeah. watch this shit. The rest of us stream it, you know, we'll catch whatever we can. But. Yeah, you know, I mean, but, yeah, I watched it last weekend. Of course, I'm going to be there in person this weekend supporting, you know. $65 fucking dollars. Fuck, yeah, dude. I'm trying to sneak in, Lucky. No sneak in. <laughs> hey. Sneak in like, I'm shit. with the band. <laughs> <laughs> follow, follow uh, I gotta follow fix the cage. Gotta fix the cage. There's a cage in my I'm okay. surprised. They normally ask for volunteers, right? So maybe they're, they're listening. Maybe they'll bring you guys in there, man. Let's go. Hey, bro. Give me a ticket. For free, dog. <laughs> <laughs> but man, I mean, of course, uh, Fury FC is one of the the bigger promotions here in Texas. I mean, they're, of course, the main cards are always on the, the uh, UFC Fight Pass. I mean, those are the kind of fights that you know. Once you guys go pro and you start fighting for promotions like Fury, I mean. Do you think you'll get a lot more nervous knowing, like, okay, now I'm on UFC Fight Pass with, like, thousands of freaking people watching? I mean, probably a little bit, but in my mind, like, we're going to be there eventually, so I'm already kind of mentally prepared for it, yeah. in a way. So and last night, or Saturday, that shit fucking sold out. Yeah, there's a lot of people there. Uh, I found out it was sold out. My homeboy was texting me when I was getting my hands wrapped, and you now I'm focused now. I'm trying to zo- zone in and shit, and he's texting me, hey, bro, I can't get in. Can you oh, get me no in? kidding. They yeah. Oh, and then my other homeboy yeah. texted me too. Hey, bro, I'm here with my little brother. And they all live in San Antonio, so they driving two, wow. uh, two and a half hours to get in. And they can't even get in. I'm like, damn. Yeah. Yeah. My boy Monte nice. moved tickets for any promoters out there. Just saying. I, I could. I, I could have sold a fuckload for this fight. Oh, no, yeah. That's but shit they're driving out there. The last fight, though, that uh, Fairy shit, that was kind of shitty to me because 65 bucks is a lot of money. Yeah. And then I sold all that shit. I tried to make sure my opponent was real. That was some bullshit too, but I ain't even tripping. It's water under the bridge now, but we didn't have no info on my opponent. I think I told you that when I did yeah. that podcast with Taco. Yeah. No info, no photos, no gym info, nothing. I didn't know. Who <laughs> now we had a picture on Tapology. It's Chuck Norris. Chuck, but everybody's <laughs> fucking Chuck Norris on Tapology if you don't got a fucking picture. Yeah. <laughs> so it was like, I don't know who this dude is. Maybe it was I, Chuck Norris. Maybe. No, no, it was no. just too far old or something, but. Yeah, I kept asking, and I asked, like, we asked every month before the fight. So we asked, like, yeah. three times, like, hey, where's this dude at? Like, you know what I'm saying? Where's he from? I got the same thing. Oh, no, he's he, he's going to come through. He, 
And then I, I got to return the tickets in, and I'm talking to Eric. I'm like, hey, bro, here's the tickets, bro. Uh, I just do real. And he was like, yeah, bro, look, this is Coach right here on the phone. And he showed me, and he was like, his medical's in already. It's going to happen. So I'm like, fuck it. And the thing about it, that's crazy. I don't know who this dude is. I don't know anything about this dude. I'm just yeah. going to go fight. Somebody. Just, just, and like I said, and I'm confident in myself because I know I can do a little bit of everything. So I was ready for whatever. But uh, so just gave him the money for the tickets. All right, cool. And I'm black. So you, you, you're looking at me saying I'm black, right? <laughs> My family's black. Country black people. Hood. They don't play about their fucking money. So they send them $65 for a fucking fight to just watch me. My family don't care about fighting. They care about me fighting. Right. So it was like, I turned that shit in, and I, I that's why I made sure. Like, okay, I don't want to hear shit this week. I just want to cut this weight and fucking relax. Uh, and then I got the news Thursday. Yeah, bro, that dude, uh, his medicals never came in. This and that. So I'm like, what the fuck? And then he offered me another guy that was four and two, and he only lost two championship fights. Both of his fights were championship fights, and I was like, and he lost. Yeah, he's actually supposed to. He's the dude supposed to fight Oscar. Oscar. And I was like, fuck it, I'll fight him shit. But I didn't want to though, cause I was ready. To, I was fucking exhausted from the cut. And um, they offered it to him. I said yes. He turned, <laughs> he turned it down Friday. So then I go to Wayne Saturday with uh, with Rob, because you know Rob fought. So I'm there with Rob and Coach Jacob and them. I'm chilling, and I already done ate. As soon as that motherfucker said no, man, I drove from. I left work and went and got a Gatorade. Went and got some gummies. Got home from work, ate some chicken strips from my fucking Bill Willis, <laughs> gravy in that boy. Full as fuck. I go in Saturday morning for the weigh-ins, and I'm walking around 165, and um, he was like, hey, bro, go lose some weight. I'll get you this fight with this guy. I said, who's the guy? The same motherfucker that turned me down the day before. He's trying to match us up again. I'm like, bro, you already said no. And I'm thinking he's playing with me, right? So I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. And then he comes back. He's like, bro, go lose weight, go lose some weight. I'll give you until 5 o'clock. And I'm like, just do serious. So I was like, you know what? Let me go talk to this fucking guy and ask him. So I went to the dude I was supposed to fight, or that he wanted me to fight, and I asked him. He said, no, again. He said, no, I don't want to fight you. Like, he what? was like, yeah. And I told him, I'm like, look, bro, I already done eight chicken strips, dog. They told me <laughs> you turned me down earlier, so I, I ate. I'm 165 right now. I can get to 160, bro. If you want to do it, we could do it at 160, dog. I'm down. And he was like, nah, he didn't want to do it. He didn't want to do that uh, 160 either. So uh, that was bad. And I was getting messages and shit, and it was annoying, dude. Like, just imagine cutting all that weight and selling all them fucking tickets and shit. And then you got to hear people mouth, like, oh, you need my money, want my money. <laughs> and then, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm stressed already. I'm ready like, to kill somebody. It's like, yeah, <laughs> man. Man, man, you see, and I mean, of course, unfortunately, that doesn't change, man, when you go pro, because sometimes. You know, even in the pro circuits, man, I mean, fighters miss weight or they just uh, injuries or whatever the case may be. But, um, I mean, that's one of the things about the fight game. I mean, you're going to have to, unfortunately, get used, not used to, but you know what I mean? It's, it's experience it. Mm -hmm. I mean, the fact that you've already gone through it, man, I mean, there, there's times uh, uh, promoters, I mean, of course, they're going to try to save whatever fights they can. So, you know, they're going to try to match up with somebody, man. But it's, yeah. it just sucks that you have to go through all that anguish, all that mental, and then just be like, okay, you don't have a fight. You know, I mean, I mean, Cam. You know, I know you took that fight, uh, the last minute fight, your first, your first fight, right? Yeah. And so, I mean, and he saved that shit. Like that's uh, that's a main that, event too. By yeah, the way. like he yeah. saved that shit. Like that's a big thing, bro. Cause um, that them ticket sales and shit, like that shit, real, bro. Like yeah, cause it's that dude's hometown too, so the ton yeah, of tables. Bro, like, you, you gotta step up, like, like. I don't know. I, I was ready to showcase. I was nervous as fuck, though, because this, this is my city, and I'm fighting some yeah. random-ass fucking dude. But I was ready to go. Like, it's, I'm already here. And um, then just to be told that the motherfucker pulled out after I tried to make sure that everything was okay. Yeah, no kidding, man. And, uh, but it's, that's how the game goes, I guess. You got to sell tickets. You got to make money for your promotion. You know what I'm saying? I don't, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. But uh, that's why I will never sell tickets again un until I know... Everything I, I I gotta you know what I'm saying I gotta just be reassured again. So I gotta go a few more events yeah. before I can get the confidence to sell tickets again. Cause that that's not that's a no. I, I don't like that. No, yeah, you see, and unfortunately, yeah, once again, I mean, a, a lot of the promotions are like that. You know, the more you tickets you sell, of course, they give you a cut. But it just sucks that you know you have to train, you have to cut weight, you have to do everything else and sell tickets on top of that. And then worry about people crying if they don't if you should get canceled. Cause people don't understand. 
this shit happens every fucking day. That's what I tell everybody when everybody asks me for tickets. I'm like, dude, I don't even know if I'm fucking fighting. <laughs> you never know. I can break my hand in this bitch. Yeah. I punch Cam on the forehead. Uh, <laughs> during the fight. Not, not on purpose, of course. No, and I fuck my hand up, and then I then I go with Louis. I punch him on the fucking forehead, and it's the little fast ones because they be like squirmish, yeah. so I catch him with the uppercuts, and uh, fuck my hand up, and I'm like, you know what I'm saying? I was like, damn, this shit kind of don't feel right, and I had to chill out for about a week or two. But so shit happens, like. No, oh, yeah, so. yeah, it does, man. Because I mean, one of the things in, in it. There's no fight that you don't go into 100% when it comes to injury because you still get bumps and bruises and, of mm-hmm. course, you know, your neck hurts, you know, all that mm-hmm. stuff, yeah. man. But, I mean, of course, uh, you know, once you get in there, man, I mean, once they close the gate, I mean, does it something click and you're like, okay, yeah, it's go town? Yeah. yeah, 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. Crazy-ass feeling. It's like, uh, honestly, I don't even, like, recognize it. It's like a, my, my subconscious takes over almost. It's like a different, like, way of thinking. Yeah. Or it's like for me, it's like I, I'm clear minded. Like at that point, once that like they're in the fucking fight camp in the hotel, I'm thinking about the fight the whole time. I'm thinking about what if I lose and my people there. Cause I'm not scared to lose. I'm not scared to fight. It's just I'm scared of what people would think about me. I guess like so I don't want to go out there and and be judged and shit. Even though uh, 90% of the motherfuckers on earth will never step in a cage and fight oh, yeah. because that's just not something people do. They'll talk shit, but they won't do it. So, but still, it's just still something because I, I take pride in this shit because I've been doing this since I was a kid. Street fighting, you beat somebody up at school, everybody, oh, boy, you beat that dude up and got the video. So it's like, that's a big thing where I'm from, street fighting. So, and the cage is the same thing. I put that pressure on myself. So I'm thinking about that shit and, and uh, just, I'm, I'm all on that. But then once I'm in the cage, it's like clear and it's like kill. I don't know, it's weird. Like, it's <laughs> like, it's just kill. Yeah. Now, let me ask you, man, uh, this fight coming up this weekend, I mean, for uh, UFC, of course, uh, we got the main event. This is oh, going to be for yeah. UFC 278, Usman versus Edwards. Oh, this yeah. is the second time these guys meet. Um, for me, I, I love underdogs, man. I mean, Leon Edwards, I'm pulling for the guy to get the uh, the victory. I mean, we'll see. But uh, who, who do you guys have winning the main event? I mean, I'll go first. I think, honestly, it depends, right? I think, I think it depends on Usman's game plan. Because Usman can go in there and, like, be like, you know what? Leon's getting taken down no matter what. And just pressure wrestling him like Khabib style. And just ground and pound him. I think Usman definitely takes a decision. But if Usman's like, I want to strike with him, I think it would be competitive to a certain point. Because I think Leon starts to pour the pace on him, pour the pressure. And Leon's such an accurate striker that even if Usman's defense is near perfect, because no one's defense is perfect, Near, he's still gonna get tagged. Yeah. One or two big shots, elbow over the top. I mean, who knows what could happen, right? Now, Usman's got a granite chin as well, and it's just gonna depend on Leon's chin. Like, if Usman level changes, boom, right hand over the top, like he did to Masvidal, can Leon take that shot or avoid that shot? But I think Leon's gonna be ready for it. I think he knows that Usman has good fundamentals and he's going to be ready for the jab and the right hand and the overhands and the level changes. I also think Leon's takedown defense is superb. Yeah. You see, that's what I'm looking at, man. Yeah, it's, it's going to be raw, dog. It's, it's superb, cool. and also he's a true 170 year as well. I mean, Usman's fucking huge. Yeah, this guy's a big dude. He's we talked huge. about weight cuts, right? This guy's yeah. like probably as heavy as his brother. Motherfucker, <laughs> arms, his arms? Yeah, bro, he's got fucking pythons, dude. He looks like a professional wrestler. Yeah, big ass arms, man. But um, it's going to be an interesting fight, but I, I think I got Leon finishing him. You got Leon? Yeah, I think so. Shit, that's a rough one. Got, man? I don't know. <laughs> it's but hard to bet against Usman. It really, I wouldn't put money on Leon, but no, no. I'm mean, saying here, I wouldn't. Yeah. But I mean, uh, it's just for me. It's one of the things like uh, my buddy Aaron Suarez. I mean, he comes in here, and we talk a lot, and one of the things that he brought up that made sense was like, if, if Leon wins, that's gonna rock the freaking top ten, you know. So now mm-hmm. it's gonna be more. It's gonna, it's gonna make things interesting and be like, okay, well now who's up, you know? Because the styles who, make fights. Yeah, man. yeah. So if Usman wins and everybody's still in the same top five, top ten. But if Leon wins, that's gonna make it make it interesting for everybody else. So that, that's what kind of what I'm looking at, man. But I mean, who, who would you pick if you had to, man? Say, like Cam says, it's variables. Like if Usman goes out there and just wrestles, it'll be a tough fight for Leon. But I think Leon can defend himself for the most part. So I don't think Leon will get his ass whooped out there, but he'll probably lose if Usman is like, I'm gonna go wrestle. 
I'm gonna throw a couple jabs. I might throw a little hands and just wrestle, wrestle, wrestle. Get him tired and just keep doing that shit. Who's gonna come win decision? But if he doesn't, if he thinks he can do what he did to Jorge, to Leon, that's okay. you got something that's coming because oh, Leon, yeah. <laughs> Leon's accurate as shit, tall as shit. He's smart. I, I kind of try to like mold my striking around Leon. I don't think I ever told anybody that, but Leon Edwards is like I try to, cause I'm real conservative with my striking. Like I can go out there and bang if I want to. I right, I, right. I got that shit. But I try to make sure I, I choose every shot right now and place. I've only been hit seven times in my last two fights. I only fought twice, but I've only been hit seven times. So I try to make sure I move, I hit, and I don't get hit. Oh, yeah. And I try to make sure I use a lot of, I try to use my, my reach, even though I'm only fucking 5'9". I try to stretch myself out and try to touch you, touch you, touch you, where I can't get touched. So I, I try to model my shit around Leon Edwards. So Leon's a dog. Like it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, It can go either way, but if I had to choose, if Usman goes out there and does what he does, he wins. Yeah. Right. But if he tries to do some extra shit, he, he might... Get checked. Might catch a surprise. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. And I mean, it's going to be a great fight. I know the uh, the whole card itself, a lot of great matchups. Uh, that's one of the fights, of course, obviously, that pretty much everybody's looking for is the, the main event. But uh, I just wanted to get your two cents on that. Um, as far as um, uh, jiu-jitsu tournaments, I mean, Cameron, you were talking about uh, doing jiu-jitsu tournaments possibly be in between fights. Yeah. Now, do you think now that you've been training in MMA, do you think it's, it's going to be easier, like, for you to go in there knowing you're not going to get hit? Oh, 100 <laughs> percent. It's going to be like a thousand times easier. You're like, oh, I, got I mean, this. of I got course, this. you just do. You still break a limb or something, but I mean, you just tap. Like, if it's not, if it's for nothing serious, I mean, you just tap. You know, it's not worth it. I mean, I I broke someone's arm before, but it was a white belt tournament. I was like, you should just tap, bro. Damn. <laughs> Stubborn. Yeah. You see, and, and for me, something like that, man, because of course. Uh, you got the refs, you got uh, the corner, corner guys just like inviting. I mean, yeah, I, I don't see why people don't do not do that more. Like, I mean, the corner guys are just like, hey, dude, you know, try to save your arm, man. Definitely throw a towel or just fucking Pride. verbally, verbally tap and say, hey, man, he's out, he's done, you know. Yeah. But, but the same thing with the combat sports, man. I mean, it's it's rare that I've seen a corner guy throw a towel. Maybe I mean, past 12 years that I've covered fights or been in fights, I mean, I've only seen it twice. Yeah, and I'm thinking like, man, is is are people that stubborn? Like, oh man, he's he's okay, he's getting freaking you know blasted, and I mean for me, I'd be like, all right, he's done, man. Like, you know, save him for for work tomorrow. Of course, majority of the uh, even the pros have to go work the next day, so it's like there's no point in staying in there getting beat up and you know taking taking it. cuts and bruises, man. Nah, yeah, it's not worth it. I mean, in the case of MMA, of course you want like you know. You want to believe in your fighter and stuff, but it does get to. So I've seen amateur fights where I'm like, "Holy shit!" Dude, and these yeah. are amateur fights, like where I'm like, "Damn, that really should have been stopped," you know? Oh yeah. Because I, I mean, you don't want to wake up with headaches, like especially at my age. You know, I'm 19. The last thing I want is brain trauma, even though I fight, you know, and I love this shit. But you know, of course, eventually, you're probably gonna get a little bit banged up, but. You know, you want to save it before you're getting checks and yeah. getting, you know, your insurance paid for. Oh, yeah. I, I think mine should have been stopped earlier. Like, yeah. <laughs> at, at first, they used to always be like, bro, like in the back, they'll tell you, like, this ain't pros yet. Y'all are amateurs, so we're going to save y'all. You know what I'm saying? We're not going to oh, let y'all yeah. take all that abuse. So if you not defending yourself after a couple punches, we're stopping it. Man, that last fight, like, I watched it and I feel kind of bad because I've seen the video. Yeah. a lot because I've been a lot of shares and, and I've seen it a lot already and I I watched it yesterday and I felt so bad like I really felt bad because I'm like bro like like this dude wanted to come and like have fun with an amateur which this is fucking MMA so like fun is like eh, you know what I'm saying like I know what I'm getting myself into I mean I, I have fun but we, we fight and we do this shit every day so it's yeah, like yeah. Us. but even then like I think, it's still scary as fuck. I think some people come in and it's like, oh, yeah, this is a new experience. They think of it like a AAU basketball game or a fucking, <laughs> like something like that. Yeah. And it's like, it's an event, you know what I'm saying? You're young, it's an amateur event. It's, it doesn't go to your record, so it's not, it don't get that deep, right. but it's deep. It's, you're still fighting another human being that wants to kill you. Like, Oh, yeah, they're not soft shots. Yeah, where I'm from, dog, like, like I said, I've been fighting my whole life, so I take fights seriously. Like, that's why I try to mimic people that don't get hit 
I hit you, oh, yeah. I, I don't want to get hit because getting hit is not fun. I've been hit before a lot without gloves on. So it's not something I want to go through. But people come in and they think it's fun and shit, and it's not. So I don't know if, you know what I'm saying, I, I think he underestimated the, not me, but just the situation. And um, and the refs got to protect people like that. Yeah. And and that was one of the situations where it's like this dude came in underprepared, and you see me fucking hammer fishing him. After the third, second, third one, he was out. But I had to hit him five more times. I couldn't stop. You know what I'm saying? If I stop, this motherfucker get up. No, yeah, I mean, yeah, and that's another thing too, man. Because they they always say wait for the ref to jump, you know, halt the fight and call it. But yeah, because if you stop, I mean, the guy could easily freaking work his guard, go for a try. You know what I mean? Like yeah, you turn it like, around and then what? Some shit that can happen. Yeah. So it's like you gotta save these dudes, man. And that that one that one did like watching it over again is like I I didn't like that. But at the end of the day, though, it is violence. You know what I'm saying? Like so. It is but what the fuck it is, but even with my fight, I, they like they were about to stop it. I feel like in the first, at the this end, motherfucker was beating that dude's head like a drum. Like I was landing, a, I landed like probably I counted my head like eleven, twelve punches in a row, like hard oh, yeah, shots. Man. Yeah, we saw. And, and then I was <laughs> like, you know, I was like, damn, I mean, you let this. I mean, he was moving a little bit, but I was like, you're still gonna let him just take this. I mean, I've seen pro fights stop for that. That's what I'm saying, bro. You know. Like the when I my first fight, I'm just the motherfucker stopping that shit after like, yeah, like a few punches. Like we have a dude, Jonathan. He he fought uh, he fought recently, and he won. But his first fight, he got he barely got clipped, and he bounced back up quick, and they stopped, stopped it. it. Yeah. And then the the dude, I seen another one where a dude was winning the whole fight or was going the whole like the the whole fight was good. He was doing his thing. The third round he gets clipped one time. He doesn't even drop. He kind of stumbles and he catches himself. And he stands back up, and the ref calls it. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, the dude didn't even get dropped. He got rocked. But he was winning. He won the first or whatever round. It was one and one. Right. And you stopped that at, like, and I think it was, like, a minute left on the fucking yeah. third round. So yeah. it's like, I've seen some shows. It's like, wow, that's questionable. And then now they're letting people get their fucking brains bashed out. No, yeah. And yeah. that's not good. Yeah, I mean, and obviously it's ref, dep- and being a ref is hard as shit. Like, I have a ton of respect for those guys. And it's real ref dependent and situation dependent, of course. Like, you can't be perfect, but there, yeah, it is some, like, it is very fighter dependent as well. Like, he said, like, there are some people who go in to an amateur MMA fight thinking, like, it's gonna be easy, thinking that it's gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna go in there, and look cool, throw yeah. my con. Like, it's not, it's like not, bro. spinning kick and come up with an elbow and you go in there and get blasted. And yeah. <laughs> like, oops. I threw a fucking spinning kick because yeah. I, I knew what was going on. Nah. <laughs> I was like, nah. My dude threw a spinning kick on me, and I was like, I'm about to double leg this dude. So, yeah, I'm not trying to get style points. I want to fucking win. The fuck no, hell and, no, bro. Well, let me let me ask you, man. I mean, as far as like you mentioned, Leon Edwards. You know, as far as like people, that you you kind of, I don't want to say shadow, but you kind of look up to and say, okay, you know what? I don't want to get hit. He's got a perfect perfect uh, like offense. I guess I would say for when it comes to his fighting. Mm-hmm. Uh, who, who do you kind of mimic? I mean, is there somebody out there that you're like? I mean, there's a lot of fighters that I would love to tailor my game towards that I'm nowhere on their level yet. Like, um, I, li- I would take, like, the viciousness of a young Aldo, like, the movement of, like, the a prime athleticism, group. The yeah. athleticism of that motherfucker. That athleticism, like, um, you know, like, Mighty Mouse's fundamentals and just, like, oh, yeah, how bro, crisp so he is, right you know? Those, those two alone right there would be freaking... Yeah, you know, I mean... I, I always, like, I love the little guys, but even, like, you know, someone like a GSP, like, GSP's fundamentals as well, just boom, fucking right hand, double leg, like, who's Bro. stopping that? Nobody. Just get on top and just beat someone's brains in. Like, there's nothing that beats that. I mean, even, you know, like, so, like, even your right favor, OG shit, um. All little guys. All little guys. Throw him here. Nah, I, of course, you know, respect for the big yeah. guys, too. Like, I mean, I can't fight no, like a John dope, Jones, the, the though. Little yeah. dudes, the little dudes, that's what they do. They, oh, yeah. They got to depend on technique yeah. and speed. You know, that's, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. one of the things I always look forward to. I mean, the bigger guys, heavyweights, you know. I mean, yeah, I, lo- I love banging, too, but I, I, don't have, I don't got Levante's power. If I did, yeah. shit. That'd be rap. I, 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 I think Count can bang some boys up. Oh, definitely, hundred percent. But they had to be small. <laughs> like you, yeah, you're your weight class. I mean, you can bang some boys up. Your weight class. And then you brought up uh, Jose Aldo. The guy is fighting uh, this weekend, also, man. He's yeah, fighting I'm at one thirty-five. I'm excited for that because his last fight, he looked phenomenal. Bro, like I'm a huge 
Jose Aldo fan. I mean, even before he, of course, everybody says it, but before he got into the UFC, I used to uh, follow a lot of the Brazilian fighters. I mean, there's been times when he's fought that I'm like, man, he's got to, you know, I mean, I don't want to say he's got to retire, but it's like, okay, he's got to do mean, something. I you know, but I mean, he, he's fighting. I mean, he looked, he did look good in this last fight, man. I mean, on this one, I mean, when it comes to retirement, let me ask you, I mean, when, when do you think a fighter should, you know, stop fighting? Is it because he's got like a fight, you know, like Cowboy Cerrone, of course, was on a losing streak and, and he's he did retire, you know, yeah. but it's just like, I mean, he put in his time and, you know, he got a couple of opportunities, but couldn't capitalize on them. Yeah. I but, think it's very case dependent because um, it's very case dependent. It just depends, like... I think dudes like um, just know when it's time. Like you, when you stop like loving going to the gym every day, fucking killing yourself every day. Cause I mean, that's what fighting is like. Literally training. It isn't like going to one jiu jitsu class a day and then going home. Be like that was awesome. It's literally like working yourself to the point where you're like, I can barely move. Yeah. And then you go home and live and then work the rest of your day and then come back and do it again at night. Like that's what training is. You know, oh, that was just my phone. That's a lot of shit. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. But let me, let me say this though, man, because even like uh, you mentioned also uh, earlier, GSP. Mm -hmm. I mean, th there's interviews where he came out and he was just like, man, I didn't want to fight anymore. Like I was just doing it because you know he was a champion and he had to go in there and perform. But uh, I mean, he was to where he himself didn't want to fight. I mean, he went into movies. I know he came back out of uh, retirement, fought Bisping won. So I mean, we can't really say. Okay, he should stop fighting because I mean, even uh, Masvidal, like, like uh, I think he he was on a losing streak, went to back to uh, I don't know what country he's from, I forgot, but uh, he he went he went away, did some reality show, came back, and he, he started doing better, you Doing know? I mean, yeah, he regrouped himself and you know went yeah. ahead. So I mean, of course, there's no like good, uh, there's no certain time when somebody should, but I mean, yeah, I mean, if, of course, like you mentioned, if you're you don't like it, you don't enjoy it anymore, then yeah, man. You, why, why get in there, you know? Yeah, I mean, of course people hit plateaus and stuff, and you need to, like, take a reset or take a year off. I mean, that, that's fine, too. You know, when it comes to, like, retirement, I feel like it just, you know, like, yeah, just when you lose that passion for it. Because, I mean, fighting, for me, you have to be 100% in or 100% out. You can't yeah. be, like, because, like, Vontae's dude was probably not 100% in. Just the way he looks, and just it yeah. just he wasn't prepared for, you, for that fight. Yeah, that or he made him look that bad. You know, it was one of the two. Man. It was one of the two. I mean, Vontae would do that to like even people that are a hundred percent. But like, just the point. Like, that's just the latest example I can think of. But you know, you you could tell when guys just get in there. You know, they're like, <laughs> they're like fucking my height fighting like one eighty five, and it's like, what are you doing, bro? Come yeah, on. you just ate a cheeseburger yeah. before you came out here. Man, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know what? One of the things, like, I mean, like I mentioned earlier, I'm nowhere near what you guys do when it comes to training. But one of the things, like me personally, man, like I go out there and I, you know, I do road work and I work out. Like, if I'm tired and I start getting sluggish, like I stop. Like I'm not gonna keep running if I'm dying because I don't person mentally I'm not gonna you know get myself any better and it's just it's not a matter of a uh, conditioning or cardio I mean by that time for me it's like okay I'm done you know I'm fucking can't do no more I'm already fucking tripping over myself but um is something like that I mean has it, that ever happened to you guys man like when you're training and you're like okay maybe I should slow down or is it just oh all the time well like I train so much so it's just the points where I'm like man you get to that point where you're like I don't, I don't know if I could do another rep coach I don't know if I could do another bag work round and then you just fucking do it you got to man <laughs> yeah, yeah you just do it well I mean yeah you guys yeah cause you guys are fighting but I'm just saying that, you know for me like um, I used to go run at the Woodland Park I don't know if you guys oh, yeah. been out there and I used to run a lot man I used to be able to do like 8, eight laps around that sucker dude, just mm -hmm. because I could yeah. but when I when I'd be out there running and, and I would see other people and they're dying, man. They're like freaking hunched over and they're just, and I'm thinking like, man, yeah, you gotta go home, man. Like, I mean, oh, yeah, at that course. point, it's just like not doing them any good, you know? Yeah, so. no, rest, rest is important. Of course, take your rest days, you know, whenever you're like, what is the point of injury? Yes, but I mean, there is like, the workouts for fighting are so hard that they're meant to like make you question yourself. Like, can I do this? And we've had dudes come and never show back up. Oh, yeah, man. And we've had dudes in the military, like athletes, that come and never show back up. Just yeah. Because, and they're over there dry heaving and shit, and it's like... Or, yeah, it'll, like, it'll be like the second round, and they're throwing up, and it's like, yeah, we haven't yeah, even started yet. Yeah, bro, that was the <laughs> oh, yeah. warm-up, dude. See, we were just shadow boxing. <laughs> yeah. Like, bro, that's, yeah. The, that's the, the uh, workout hasn't started yet, man. And, yeah, I mean, I 
been there and I've seen it, and yeah, bro, I mean, there's, there's no joke. I mean, something, even just coming into a gym, I mean, people, I'm sure there's hundreds of people out there that are like, oh, man, I can, I can do one round in the UFC. Well, come, come do a drill, you know, a couple of drills and, and see if you can go through the workout itself and then, you know, see if you, you want to do this for real because it, it's strenuous, man. I mean, mm-hmm. like you said, you got to push yourself, push yourself to, to where you can't do no more and then just keep going. You know? Exactly, and and not, that's not to say that um, people can't come and inspire to like join the MMA team or fight, but they just need to understand what it takes. It takes like it takes pretty much everything you got, yeah. sacrifice, and more. Sacrifice. I'm about to quit my job right now, man. I'm getting paid eighteen sixty an hour to fucking make O rings, the easiest shit in the world. But they change the the schedule to twelve hour shifts, and the schedule is yeah. gonna be jumping around, and I won't be getting out till six. And I'm about to be missing practice, so I'm about to quit that shit. So it's like you gotta make some sacrifices. Like I know you gotta make money for your family, and shit, because I got a family, I gotta take care of, I got a son, a girl, and shit. So I gotta take care of them. But I just gotta grind it out and just see if I can find something else. So this is yeah. a fucking process right now. Like it's weird. Like you know what I'm saying? I gotta yeah. go from making eighteen sixty an hour, chilling, easy ass job, to now I gotta find something else and and you know what I'm saying? Try to try to maintain for my family. But it is what it is. Like I'd rather invest in this now because I'm already fucking too deep. You know what I'm saying? I'm too deep in this shit now, man. I got two fights already, bro. Fucking, I spend money every month to stay here. I'm invested in my teammates now, my coaches, like yeah. like family now. It's like uh, too deep. Now I got fans and shit. Well, not fans because they're not fans of my friends and family, but I got supporters right. and shit that support me. And I'm I'm my amateur with two fights, you know what I'm saying? And people hit me up, want to buy tickets, want to come and shit. People I haven't even talked to since middle school and shit. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? So it's yeah. like... It's like I got support and shit, so I'm already too deep in this shit now. And uh, I've seen my potential, and people have seen my potential too. Oh yeah, man. Definitely. Like people tell me I look comfortable in there, and they can, you know, so they can see me making it, you know, further than just fucking no, amateurs. So. Definitely, you haven't even scratched it, bro. Like, yeah, you I'm, don't even know. And this is like, like I haven't even really. Com- I'm committed, of course, but I could be working harder. You know what I'm saying? So it's like just imagine when I start working harder, and I, and I clean shit up and I've been doing this for another year or two is I don't I don't think I'm um, it's gonna be crazy. Let me let me ask you this, can can we see you at one forty five? Yeah. When, when I'm pro, but you gotta pay me for that shit. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, man, this is right now. You're not getting paid, so yeah, you know, don't don't kill yourself. But uh, but yeah, man, I mean, definitely going pro and. The one forty five weight division, dude. Oh uh, shit. Yeah, because the way my frame is made, I'm not that big. Like, like I'm not that big. My arms are skinny as shit. I can't really bench press that much. You see, and I was going to ask you, because at 170 and then fighting at 155, I mean, did you still feel the same, like, when it came to, like, your strength, your power, were you still pretty comfortable? Walking around, I felt weird as shit. Like, at 70, I felt like me. Like, I was, like, I felt heavy and strong. Like, because I don't know, I feel like I'm real dense. So, like, I just feel like I'm just, you know what I'm saying, I'm right. grounded. But at 55, my like, my legs felt kind of, like, shaky a little bit. But, like, I would go into a building that's cold, I'm in there shaking and chattering and shit because, like, I'm, I'm fucking skinny. Then my legs felt kind of weird. Shaking strips, you're like, yeah, <laughs> I'm like, damn. Legs felt kind of weird. Even after we, we, we rehydrated and ate and stuff, I just still felt kind of, like, different, you know? It's yeah. a different feeling. That you know, hotel when, was cold as fuck, It was too. cold, too. <laughs> no, you see, and I was going to say, man, because, I mean, of course, you wanted to keep your, your body warm, you know? I mean, we're, going into the fights, do you guys usually, like, wear warm-ups and, and hoodies just to stay? I wear, I like to wear sweats. I, 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 I fucked up and didn't wear it. <laughs> Vontae was wearing a white beater and fucking shorts all weekend. Yeah, so I'm like, <laughs> chilling. You were on vacation, bro. Yeah, it was a vacation. I'm, I'm chilling. I'm in the hotel dancing for the fight Oh, shit. yeah, I saw that, Chilling. <laughs> and then, fucking, now I gotta go fighting. But... But inside the cage, um, that dude was strong. But I think he walks around at 50. Right, like, I think he's, yeah. like, around that weight. So he's comfortable there. Uh, me, I'm not comfortable there. And then I, I didn't jump weight like I thought I was. I thought I was going to be 175 in that cage, dude. That's probably... I said 168. Yeah. I probably was, like, 165. Because like, uh, remember when, when you came in that morning mm-hmm. or that afternoon, he bought a scale that Saturday around, like, 2. And I was, I stepped on, I was 164. And I only ate one, one more time before that, and it wasn't even heavy, so I was probably like 165 in the fucking ring. And he didn't even really drink his gallon because it was alkaline water. He <laughs> tastes like know. shit. <laughs> it, bro, alkaline tastes water like, is the best. It tastes <laughs> like I licked a, a battery, like an old battery. I, I've never shit. had alkaline water, man. I keep seeing it, and I'm like, yeah, this... Because I've heard about it. I mean, of course, it's supposed to be a lot better than, you know, just regular water. 
But um, yeah, I'll probably try it out too, man. I want to check that out. I didn't like it. <laughs> maybe, maybe because my mouth is dry and I, you know, what I'm saying, oh, yeah, I had that, that weight or something. My tongue was dry. Dude, I had two something. gallons probably the day of the fight. My mouth was still dry in the cage. I was like, what's my, going dude, on? I'm looking at my lips and shit. I'm like, I'm drink some water. I'm drinking water backstage. I'm like, I can't breathe. Like, like my throat felt dry. And I was a stool coach. They gave me like this much water. I'm like, damn, I'm thirsty, coach. <laughs> <laughs> and this motherfucker went three rounds. I didn't even get to get no. I didn't have to get no water though. Yeah. <laughs> nah, you were lucky you didn't have to get no water. Man, let me ask you, uh, of course, Fury FC, man, I mean, their fights are usually on Sunday. I mean, you guys are used to fighting Fridays, Saturdays. I mean, for to get a, a Sunday fight, I mean, would you have to, like, start training on, like, because you guys do train on Sundays, right? Back here at the gym? Open mat. Yeah, but I mean, how, how would how do you think something like that, would you have to start sparring on Sunday just to get mentally prepared? No, I think it would be, it'd be business as usual. I mean... I think the recovery would be a little bit weird because it'd be yeah. Monday and it'd be like, damn, I'm sore. You're like, I'm going to go to work today? You're like, damn. Yeah. And then the cool. coat, and then the weight cut would probably start a little later too. Or like, oh, yeah. the time would be, yeah, be different. That. But Fury has more than weigh ins, and that's one thing I'll yeah. say about them that is just A1. Because wait until five to fucking eat. I was like, oh, my, I was going nuts, man. I was like, dude, but I wasn't even that hungry. I was just real thirsty. Like, yeah. this cut, like, my first cut, I was hungry. I was like, dude, I'm hungry as shit. Dude, no, nah, I took a pee and it made me thirsty. Or not thirsty, <laughs> it made me hungry. I was like, how does this make me hungry, bro? Does your pee smell like a cheeseburger? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, chill, kid. Was that all that alkaline water you were drinking, man? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> like salmon. But, man, gentlemen, I want to thank you guys for stopping by here, of course, man. I mean, I uh, definitely want to run another one soon. I know a um, teammate, you know, Taco's going to be fighting uh, this Sunday. Yes, um, sir. I, I know there's a couple of more fighters coming up for Fury, and we're, we'll definitely... I'll, I'm gonna try to bring them in here as, as you know the time comes. Oh, we need to get Jeff Neal in here. I seen Jeff Neal like the yes, shit. Yes, bro. He's, oh yeah, he's, he's supposed to come that one time. Yeah, he needs to come spar. Yeah, I I've been a friend of Jeff Neal too. That was one dude I watched him fight on that Max Holloway car when he fought Frankie yes. Edgar in uh, Canada. Yeah. Oh, was that Canada? I think it was Canada. He just fought. Nigga Price. He? When when he fought a. Uh, no, when he fought that fucking Samoa that dude from uh, Hawaii or whatever. Oh, he shoot, with that man. Head kick. Yes, yes, uh, yeah. And I watched the Nico Price one too, and I watched the Mike Perry. And knocked him out with the head kick. Bro. I, I watched. I uh, keep up with that man. Didn't he uh, just fight? Yeah, he just he just knocked out uh, Luke. Yeah, that's uh, right. Luke. He, he, oh, yeah. And I called that shit. And, uh, but yeah. You see, and I had talked to his dad, and, and I told him, I said, man, I saw him at the weigh-ins, and I was like, dude, he looked fucking lean. Like I was like, damn, he's ready, man. I I, I ain't like his afro though. I <laughs> just, like, tell him this is this shit. Tell him I ain't like his afro. <laughs> like it looked like it was short in front and big in the back. I think that's for him moving too fast, bro. It's probably right. The wind was blowing his shit back, but that shit was clean. I like you it. can tell him that when he comes by, bro. We'll yeah, tell him come on by. I, I, I want oh, to get some working with him because no, yeah, he, he's bro. another guy that I, I look at a strike and it's dude, like it's I can picture myself shit, doing that shit man. too. Like, like, oh yeah, did you see in the guy? I mean, of course. I mean, I've been uh, following the sport for over twelve years, man. But the guy when he was an amateur, like I used to follow him here. Like I met his dad. Uh, saw him fight his pro fight in, in Corpus, and even back then I was just like, damn, this guy's gonna be freaking dangerous, man. Yeah. And, I mean, I know he had hit a, a speed bump, and even the, in the UFC, he had two back to backs. Uh, yes, Wonderboy the boy and uh, Neil, yeah, uh, Magni. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah he does yeah. new Magni and Wonder so, Boy. Yeah, so those, I mean, of course, two savages uh, though. But you see, but they, they couldn't take him out though, man. That's kind of mm -hmm. what in the back of my head I'm like, well, they couldn't do what uh, Wonder Boy they would look at. You know, he yeah. chopped him up. I mean, he couldn't do that with Neil with Jeff. Uh, same thing, you know, with Magni. I mean, it was just like, wow, okay, well, yeah, they definitely good. respected his striking, so they just did what they could, and, and uh, you know, mm -hmm. I'll point it, man. But, but yeah, I'm definitely. I, mean, I know I messaged him the other day, so I definitely want to bring him down here, man, and and we'll see, man. I mean, I know uh, he's looking to fight. I mean, I know he wanted to fight uh, Burn, Gilbert Burns, so we'll that, see if that, that fight sticks. I, I think I think he can get it done. He just gotta. I haven't really seen too much of Jeff No grappling though, but I know his hands. He's fundamentally sound. Like I like watching dudes like that. That. Because I'm not going to say, ah, I want to fight like Israel or Sonic. Because I know I can't do that shit. I'm not flexible. My back hurts and shit. <laughs> my neck hurt. I'm not doing all that crazy shit. Even though I did throw a spinning back kick. Oh, yeah. It landed that shit pretty yeah. clean. But I like watching dudes that are here straight up. They throw hands. They got, you know what I'm saying, some kicks. Yeah. But nothing nothing flashy. Just straight technical. Like Leon Edwards, too. Like those dude, dudes like that. I like watching dudes like that. Because it's like, I can see myself doing that. So. Oh yeah, I mean, dude, that I mean, these guys, I mean, they're definitely on on their level, dude, and, mm -hmm. and he's one of those, and and that's kind of why I brought up earlier, um, the uh, Liam Edwards. Like, if if he wins, man, I mean, that's just gonna make it interesting for for guys like like yeah, me, yeah. for guys like you know, yeah. because that that's gonna stir the pot, I guess you can say, man. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm looking forward to that fight, man. So we'll see what happens this weekend. 
But, uh, but yeah, gentlemen, thank you. Thank you yes, both sir, for stopping by. Thank, thank you. you. And everybody out there, of course, this is Spider, the Fight Car Podcast. Oh, wait, one more thing. Yes, sir. Taco, let's get this fucking dub, baby. Cam, good shit on your fucking dub, baby. Yes, let's sir. go. Let's go, Taco. You got this shit, boy. Yes, sir. Thank you, guys. And until next time, follow up. Yes, sir. We should be good. It's going to be taking a few seconds for it to stop, but we'll be ready. But, uh, but yeah, man, I mean, as far as uh, these fights coming up, I mean, I know uh, Tapper Scrap, I mean, I, I like their, their setup, man. I mean, of course, they're going to...